A few years ago I found Brackis how to make a video game series and I instantly fell in love with game development. In the first episode he introduced the rigid body component, which is a type of component in Unity that you attach to any game object to make it respond to physics interactions. It gives the object mass, drag, gravity, etc. allowing it to be affected by forces to behave realistically when it collides with other objects. And I was amazed how can it do these heavy calculations in real time with so many objects. But how many objects exactly? Let's find out. I know Brackies and many others have video about this topic, but a few years has passed since then, so I was thinking I'm gonna give it a go. I started stacking cubes on top of each other, but I found it a bit too slow, so I created a simple script to do this automatically. For the script you can find the link in the description. Now it's much easier, so let's test it out. Bear in mind that these Results are highly depends on your system specifications, so you might find different numbers with your rig. And my specs is on the screen now. I started with 2000 cubes and as I saw it was running butter smooth with whopping 400 fps. So I increased the number of cubes, I tried 4000, 6000, 8000. And when I reached 10,000 cubes, it started to slow down to about 40 FPS. And I realized Unity has some overhead, so I built it and the simulation was smooth again. Then I increased it to 14,000 and it was okay, it ran around 40 FPS. There are a few optimizations that we can do. First I headed to the materials and enabled GPU instancing, however the results were not significantly different, which makes sense because rendering the scene don't use that much resources in this case. When I turned to the physics settings, I started experimenting with the fixed time step. This determines the number of physics updates per second in Unity. I increased it to 0.04, 0.06, 0 0.08 and 0 0.1. But as you can see, all above 0.04, I had more FPS, but the simulation was laggy. This is because now we see every physics calculation that happens in time. At 0.1, we have only 10 calculations per second, while with 0.02, we have 50 calculations per second. But then, I had a great idea. What if I tried using spheres instead of cubes? It turned out to be a major breakthrough. I was surprised, but then I realized something. In a nutshell, when using Box Collider, the physics engine calculates overlaps for multiple faces, edges and vertices in real time, while with the sphere you have an origin and a radius and if the other object distance is less or equal than this radius then it's colliding. And this is way less calculation heavy. I started with the same number of spheres as I had previously used with cubes and my FPS increased from 40 FPS to 60 to 90 FPS. So let's find the max numbers with spheres. After experimenting for a while, I found that with 0.04 time step, 20,000 spheres is the maximum. So that's it for this video. Wait, there's one more huge thing I left out. Dots. Well, recently Unity released the Entities 1.0 and it's part of Dots, which stands for Data Oriented Technology Stack, a new programming model in Unity. The main idea of ECS is that you divide your objects into individual components that hold data and then you write systems that operate on the data of entities that test a particular set of components. ECS can enable incredible performance and memory savings in your Unity project, especially with large number of objects. Based on this, it's exactly what we need. All we need to do is create something called subscenes. Under these subscenes, every object will be converted to entities. And that's all we need to do in this particular case. Before you build it, make sure you disable vSync in the settings because if you don't, your maximum FPS will be your monitor's current refresh rate. So I started with the maximum number of game objects and the simulation talks for itself. The same numbers, 14,000 cubes, what was almost broke Unity before, now runs between 450 to 600 FPS. I tried with the number of spheres we achieved before, which is 20,000, but with cubes now, it's over 200 FPS. And that is where the power of dots and entities lies. For example, if you develop for mobile, even if you use the same number of objects, it can significantly reduce the power consumption and extend battery life. So let's find the maximum number of objects. I started randomly with 24,000 cubes and it ran slightly over 100 FPS and around 28,000 cubes it slowed down to 30 FPS. 
but after increasing the fixed time step to 0.04 I could achieve 50 to 60 fps. So I would say now we can achieve smooth performance with 28,000 cubes but don't forget if we change the shape to sphere and run the same number then it's a completely different story. I started with the same number as before and it was over 150 fps so I experimented with the following number of entities 30,000 40,000 and when I reached 50,000 it still ran around 60 fps and it started to slow down beyond 50,000. After I tried with 0.04 time step I could reach 23,000 fps. So the final number is 53,000 fps. Last thing I wanted to make some interesting collapsing shapes so I wrote a small script to do that. It simply finds every vertex in a mesh and instantiates an object to its positions. Then I moved to Blender and created some simple shapes and exported it to FBX files. It created some strange behavior, basically my shapes were exploding. And this is because depending the vertex position some of the objects were overlapping each other and when I started the simulation it just blew up. But I left this bug in there because I think it's really fun watching these objects explode. And at last I used the model of the Eiffel Tower to simulate its collapse in Unity. Bon appetit! Thanks for watching, if you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe. Let me know in the comments about your own experiments and share any other optimization tips you knew. And see you in the next video.